dear sisters, today I'm going to, to, con to continue our talk on biblical friendships and on, on the importance of choosing friends wisely. And as you remember, I was going to present before you a couple of biblical examples feminine, of feminine uh, friendships from the Word of God. So that's what I'm going to do. So my first is example is Ruth and Naomi. Obviously, it is a mentoring relationship. Uh, but it's extremely, extremely interesting to analyze and see how those two women from different cultures, different worlds interacted and how they just fell in love with each other and how they clung to each other. So before we start, I would strongly recommend that you read, just pause this video for a, se for a second and read the book of Ruth so you can gain a fresh perspective and kind of refresh what I'm going to talk about in your mind. Um, so as we look, especially at Ruth, I'm going to focus directly on her as a young woman, as a, a woman desiring a spiritual mother. So, as we look at, at, the, at her, I'm going to focus on a fact, and I want you to pick that also. What kind of friend she was? What kind of disciple she was to Ruth? So, the first thing that I personally noticed, and there is, it's so deep. I, this is just a light, breathy overview of what you can just see with your bare eye, but there is so much more that I want you to see and read between the lines. So first of all, what I saw in, in, uh, in Ruth is that she was extremely, a, a, a young woman, but an, an extremely wise woman. I would even say aggressively wise in a good sense, because when she saw the opportunity to learn and glean and stay by her mother-in-law, she pursued her. She clung to her, to her. And you know, what I see in this on a practical level is that older women, older godly women are the greatest asset of the church and the resource of the church. And it is extremely sad that very often they're just put aside to the back burner, but they're, they're so, they can impart so much wisdom and we can glean so much from them. They have so much to give to younger, less experienced women, and they can disciple, uh, disciple younger women. They shouldn't be like Naomi that thought that she doesn't have anything to give. That's exactly what Naomi thought. What can I give Ruth? You know, there's so much more she can gain if she goes back to her land. But this is not true. We see from, her, from this story that this turned out completely wrong. Ruth had so much to glean from her and learn from her, which Ruth obviously, obviously had an incredibly teachable spirit. So those older women in the church in their 40s and their 50s and their 60s and 70s and 80s, they have so much wisdom to impart to us. So let us be like Ruth, let us cling to them, let us run to them, let us learn from them. But they would no, never know that we truly need them and their experience uh, from their, the experience of their pain, the experience of their struggles, the experience of their trials. They would never know if we would not let them know, just like Ruth did. Aggressively, she came. She said, I want to be with you. I'm staying with you. Where you will go, I will go. My, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. So, my dear sisters, especially the younger ones, I'm addressing you right now, cling, run to the older women. Yes, it's not popular. Yes, you want to hang out with the young and fashionable ladies of this world. No. Take this wisdom, apply this wisdom, glean from older women, even if it's, if it's not possible, po uh, fashionable, even if it goes against, you know, what other young women are doing, just hanging out together and, you know, shopping and doing all kinds of, you know, worldly stuff. No, glean, glean this wisdom from Ruth. She desired to be by a godly older woman. The second thing that I noticed about Ruth is that she was an extremely loyal friend. And read Ruth 1.16. Where does she say? Where 
you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. That is a, an incredible virtue of a good friend is loyalty. Again and again, in my own personal life, my best friends are my most loyal friends that stayed with me, even the ones I had to leave in Russia, but they're still keeping in touch. They're praying for me. They're reaching out. They're making sure that they know how I'm doing spiritually. And so they're loyal friends. A good friend loves at all times, we know. A good friend will always love you unconditionally and be loyal to you, even in your most uh, unlovable and difficult times. And that's exactly, exactly a picture of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was bitter. She was broken. Uh, there was nothing lovable at her, in her at that particular moment. But Ruth still, in spite of everything, she still clung to her. A friend loves at all times, just as, as I mentioned. A good, loyal friend is not a good weather friend. <laughs> it's kind of play of, on the words here. And she proves it, a good friend proves it by her actions, by always being there for you. And that's what we need to be as sisters, to be always there for each other. Even if we, we are distance apart, miles apart, we can still be there for each other through intercession. You know, there are so many dear sisters, incredibly sweet <laughs> sisters that I left in Russia, but I am in their lives through intercession. Maybe not regularly, maybe not every day, but I'm, I'm still praying for them. I, I'm remembering them after this 12 years, 13 years actually being in the States by now. I'm remembering them. Uh, when the Lord brings that name to my mind, I would say a prayer for that sister. Lord, Lord bless her and shine your face upon her and be gracious unto her. So, and a good disciple is loyal and sticks with you. And that is an, an incredible virtue for a young woman that is in a mentoring relationship is to be loyal and sticking with you. True friendship is undying. True friends cling to us. Bad friends like Oprah, <laughs> Orpah, sorry, like Orpah, leave us. The uh, third virtue that I noticed in Ruth, Ruth was unselfish in her devotion. Like, like I mentioned, she was not seeking, you know, um, to be with young women, to go back to her land, land, to marry again, all the popular things that you would think a young woman would choose. No, but she was unselfish in her devotion. And that is an amazing, amazing character trait of a Christian friend. And that's what we can cultivate by God's grace in us. Our loyalty to each other, our unselfishness in our devotion to each other. We know that Ruth was willing to sacrifice everything. That is amazing. She was willing to sacrifice everything for Naomi. Everything. She knew it would, not, it would not be easy to live with a widow. In those times, it was excruciatingly difficult. Uh, that she, and that she was facing uncertainty. Where will they live? Where will they go? What will they do? You know, she knew that, but she still chose to be unselfish in her devotion. She was sacrificial uh, because she actually had to be a gleaner in the fields with poor and the outcast. She chose, she didn't even care, you know, what she had to do in regards to her job to provide for her friend, to bless her friend. Another very important character trait that I noticed in Ruth that I pray all of us cultivate, and especially of you younger women who are in a mentoring relationship. She was teachable and receptive. And you know, I cannot say enough about these two incredible fundamental virtues for a young woman to develop, to be teachable and receptive, and actually for all of us, because friendship will never, ever go anywhere if we are not willing to, to receive and if we are not willing to impart. So they will not go anywhere, our friendships. friendships. Ruth completely 
identified herself with God's people, with Naomi's people, with her life, with her culture. And that's what a good friend does. A good friend identifies herself with your life, with your interests, with everything who, of who you are. A good friend shares your life, shares your passions and everything that is dear to you. She shares your faith. Uh, you know, obviously, that our dearest friends are our sisters in Christ because we have one blood running in our veins. You know, we are sisters in the Lord. Uh, and we remember that's what exactly what Ruth says. My God shall be your God. And a good friend is always there for you and near you. That's exactly what Ruth did. She is teachable. She is pliable. She is willing to receive counsel. And you know, uh, let me pause here for a second. That is an amazing, amazing virtue for, for us women to, um, to develop is the willingness to grow, the willingness to learn from older, wiser women, the willingness to receive counsel, not just to shut down and think that we know better, that we are wiser. No, no. Uh, it's, it's just it's an incredible virtue, the willingness to receive counsel. In the multitude of counsel, we wage war. In the multitude of counsel, there is great wisdom. And another great virtue that I noticed about Ruth is that she trusted Naomi's judgments. There was just a relationship of trust between of them. And that's what we as Christian women should cultivate in our friendships. That transparency, that trust, that willingness to receive and willingness to impart. And I will bring another great example of, of a biblical friendship before you next week. Lord wills. God bless and see you next week.